Let's get on to a more interesting problem uh, where we have to use the net torque to analyze it. Uh, what we have right here is a situation. Let's take a look here. Um, we've got a wall and we've got a, a big sign. And these sometimes, you know, well, signs outside of businesses will be held up this way. Uh, and we got a worker who's up here about to fix the, the attachment point of the sign or something like that. There's a rope or a chain holding up the sign. And the sign is attached by some kind of pivot axis or some kind of attachment point right there at the, uh, at the wall. And our question here that we're trying to answer is, what is the tension in this rope when the worker is a quarter of the way out of the length L of the sign? What is the tension in that rope? So let's go ahead and use our problem solving strategies to try to solve this. We start with the first problem solving strategy, which is drawing a free body diagram. That is so important. I can't stress that enough. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, what we want to do is um, go ahead and start drawing some forces at the point they're applied at. We do have to start with figuring out which object do we want to analyze. So you might ask, which object in this picture is the one where all the forces are acting on it? Well, that object is the sign, this big old rectangle right here. Uh, that is the object we're going to analyze. So let's go ahead and draw the forces on it. Well, we've got this person of mass m, so I'm going to actually apply this force right there. That's the, the point of application, and I'm going to label that mg. It's a person of mass m. So mg is uh, right there where they're standing. It's a force on the sign. Now, if this sign were accelerating, you might ask yourself, would that force be mg? And the answer is no. Uh, the normal uh, force would be less than mg if that person was accelerating. So the force of the person on the sign would be less than mg. Okay, what other forces are acting on the sign? Well, we have, of course, the tension that we're trying to find. So I'm just going to label that right here. There's our tension. Okay, that's uh, kind of already labeled there as T. Uh, it is important that we have the angle, and that would be given to you in a problem, if, unless you had to figure it out. That angle is theta right there. We'll call that theta. Uh, the mass of our sign is 2m, by the way. Uh, what other, uh, so let's go ahead and deal with the, the mass of the sign. Is that going to affect any of these forces? Well, there's a force of gravity acting on the sign of mass 2m. What's the force of gravity and where does that act? Well, very important concept. The force of gravity can be assumed to entirely act at one point on the sign. And that is the center of mass. So let's go ahead and try to let, locate that. Notice uh, I'm picking out the center of mass both vertically and horizontally. And that'll be force right there of 2mg, because the mass of it's 2m. 2m times g is that force right there, acting at the center of mass of the sign. Its weight is pulling right at the center of mass. Any other forces? we got the force of the person exerting on the sign, the force of gravity on the sign, the tension on the sign. You might say, oh, that's it. There actually are more forces. Think about this. If the, if the tension were pulling with some component to the left, why isn't this thing accelerating to the left? It's because there is some force acting right here at the wall. Uh, now, some people or some textbooks call that the reaction force. I don't like that because any force could be considered the reaction force. Uh, you could say that is the original force at that right there and that the tension is the reacting reaction force. So um, I just like to call it the force of the wall. Now the force of the wall, you might be able to guess, is actually pointing well. It's got to push to the right to counteract the tension to the left. It's got to hold this end up. The, the force of the wall is act, actually acting probably something like that, force of the wall. Um, what I like to do, though, and I mentioned this before, is rather than trying to deal with that force, let's just go ahead and break it up into two components. Now, if you're doing a free body diagram on the AP exam, they want you to just show that force right there, uh, not components on the original free body diagram. Uh, but like I said, if you uh, for, for my class, it's okay if you draw the components on the free body diagram, as long as you realize that they are components. And the components I'm going to draw are 
this one right here, I'm going to assume that this is the way it's pushing horizontally. I'm going to call that force of the wall, F sub W, sub X, double subscript, force of the wall in the X direction. And then, of course, we're also going to have the force of the wall that the wall is exerting in the Y direction, force of the wall in the Y direction. And we can just say they're acting right at that pin where that sign's being held. So those are two other forces that are acting. Again, that really only makes up one force, the force of the wall, but the two components uh, can be drawn separately, and that's okay for uh, drawing those for me. Not on the, on the AP exam, though. you got to make a separate diagram if you want to draw those components. Okay, so now what? Well, once we've gotten all of our free body uh, diagram done, in other words, we've shown all the forces acting on this, the next step is to choose an axis of rotation. And we want to choose a convenient axis of rotation. Uh, by the way, if our, if our direction of these forces, if these assumptions are wrong, they might just come out negative. But uh, these, these are the correct directions as it turns out. Now, let's go ahead and choose an axis of rotation. We want to find the tension. Uh, there's a lot of uh, unknown forces here. There's the tension. There's the forces of the wall. They're all unknown. Is there an axis we can choose so we don't have to even deal with the forces of the wall in our torque equation? What axis could we choose so that the forces exerted by that wall on the sign have no torque? Choose this point as your axis of rotation then the forces of the wall will exert no torque about that axis. Why is that? Because their lever arm is zero, and as well as the fact that the R is zero. The displacement from the axis of rotation to the point of force application is zero. They're being applied right there, so if we choose that as the axis of rotation, then we don't need those in our torque equation, which is actually going to come in handy. All right, well, we have our awesome free body diagram now. Let's go ahead and pick a direction for positive rotation and then solve our equations. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick uh, counterclockwise as positive. That away we'll pick as positive. It may be different than the other notes. So that's okay. Uh, but um, what that means then, if rotation that way is positive, which way is going to be positive for x and y? Well, let's just look at this end here. If this is rotating positively, then up is going to be positive for y direction, but if we also look at this end, then we have to set to the left positive as well. Because that's the way this end would move translational. If it was rotating to the around counterclockwise, this end would move to the left. So uh, that's a great way to start your problem so you get your positives and negatives straight. Now we're going to go ahead and write our equations. The one I recommend you start with is always start with the net torque, and it's got to be about the axis you've chosen, which we've chosen that star as our axis, is equal to zero. You can get just one point in the AP exam just for writing that. So we've got that. Sometimes that is the only equation you'll need, so I recommend starting with the torque. So let's go ahead and figure out what our torques are. Well, not every torque, not every force will exert a torque, but let's go ahead and just assume they do so we can uh, get a complete equation. So we've got the torque of the force of the wall. So the torque due to the wall. Uh, plus we got the torque due to that person. Plus the torque due to the force of gravity acting on the sign, distinct from the force of the person on the sign. Force of gravity acting on the sign. And we also have the torque due to the tension. Torque due to the tension. And those are all going to add up to be zero. Do we leave out any forces that cause torques? I don't think we did. Okay, let's keep going with this. Let's list, let's get more specific about those. Well, the torque that the wall exerts, well, notice that both of the, uh, the forces, the components I've indicated, forces due to the wall, their R's are zero. They act right at that uh, rotational axis we've chosen. So these, that's going to be zero. Both the X and Y forces 
act at the axis of rotation. The person's force. Now that's not going to be zero. Let's take a look at this and figure out what is the torque of the person. Well, here is our R from the axis of rotation to the point of force application. Right there is the R for the force that the person exerts. Now, we got a problem because we do not know the height of this sign. So we don't know R, but we are not going to give up. Turns out we don't even need that R. We don't need the height of the sign. If we just look at the line of action of this weight of the person, here's the line of action of that force. Notice that we can just use the lever arm. The shortest route of transportation from this line of action to the axis of rotation is just L over 4, as we saw right there. So it turns out we've got everything we need to figure that out. So I'm just going to say the torque of the person is just, it is R cross F, but in this case, it'll be DF. Now, so D is just L over 4. And uh, so this is L over 4 times mg. Now, is that going to be a positive torque or a negative torque? Well, let's look at our chosen rotational direction as positive. So if this person was the only torque that was acting about that axis, the force down would cause a spin clockwise. So that's going to be negative. That's in our negative direction. L over 4 times mg. Again, the lever arm is just this distance, L over 4, and then you just multiply that by the force, and you've got the torque. Sweet. How about the torque due to gravity? Okay, well, gravity's acting right there. So again, all we need is this R. Here's the R of gravity. I'm going to use green here for gravity. Here's R, the distance displacement from the axis of rotation to the point of force application. Hey, that's just L over 2. Well, that's easy. Okay. So is it positive or negative? Well, by the same argument, just gravity acting alone would pull this thing down. And it would cause it to rotate about this axis clockwise. So that's going to be negative 2. Negative, uh, I'm just going to use for this one R F sine theta. And that'll be R is L over 2, and it's negative. F is the force of gravity 2mg, and it's the, the mass of the uh, sine is 2m. That's why it's 2mg. The sine of the angle between them. Well, we can see right here that the angle right there is 90 degrees. Um, and it doesn't matter if you use that angle. Really, you're supposed to put them tail to tail to figure out the angle between the vectors. But that'll also be 90 degrees. So it's sine of 90, uh, which goes to 1, and there we go, that's 1. So it's just negative L over 2 times 2m times g. That's the torque due to gravity. How about the torque due to the tension? Well, let's figure that one out. I'm going to use a different color for that. So plus, okay, so what do we got? We got this tension right there, T. What is our R in this situation? Well, here's R right here. I'm going to use this purple color. It is the displacement from the axis of rotation to the point of force application right there. That's R. R is just, I'm going to write RF sine theta again here, RF sine theta. Uh, R is just L. The force is just the tension. And what is the angle between those two? Well, we'd actually have to put them tail to tail like this to figure out the angle between them, which is that right over there. But because that sine of that angle will be the same as the sine of this angle, theta, I'm just going to use sine of theta there. And notice it really is sine of 180 minus theta, but sine of theta is equal to that. And is that positive or negative? Well, by our definition, if counterclockwise is positive, this tension, if that was the only force acting, would spin this thing counterclockwise, so that would be positive. And that adds up to zero. Now, let's take a look at this. How many unknowns are in that? I'm given L. I'm given all the masses. The only unknown, I'm given theta, the only unknown is the tension. You solve that, 
you're done with the tension. There's only one unknown there. How awesome is that? Now, if we had to find, for example, the force that the wall exerts, that is the only time we would actually need to do the other two equations. So let's go ahead and just write those out real quick so that we can, if we had to, we could figure out the force that the wall is exerting. So again, I want the, the other two equations are gonna be this. The net force in the x direction equals zero and the net force in the y direction equals zero. So let's go ahead and write those out. What are the forces in the x direction? Well, we've got our component of tension. That is gonna be, if this is theta, that'll be T cosine theta. And that is pointing what we're calling a positive direction. So that's positive. Any other forces in the x direction? Well, yeah, the force of the wall x. Again, I just put the component down there, pre-componentized for us. So that'll be minus force of the wall x, and that is going to add to zero. So cool, as soon as we found the tension, boom, we got the force of the wall in the x direction. Now let's go ahead and do our forces in the y direction. Well, let's see what they are. Let's look back at our free body diagram. We've got the force of the wall in the y direction. Let's indicate that. And by our definition of up being positive, we believe that's going to be positive. If it's not, it's okay. It'll, it'll come out negative. Force of the wall, we're going to assume it's positive in the y direction. Okay, we also have the force of the person. And according to our definition of which way is positive, that's going to be negative. So it'll be minus mg negative mg, force due to that person. How about the force due to the weight of the sign itself? That is gonna be negative as well, and it's gonna be negative two mg, because the mass of the sign is two m, negative two m times g. There's the weight of the sign. And then we've also got the vertical component of tension, which is gonna be positive plus the force of tension in the y direction, or T sine theta. Those three are gonna add up to zero, and then all we, we know tension from the torque equation. Notice that all we need to do is solve here for the force of the wall in the y direction, force of the wall in the x direction, and we've got the overall force that the wall is exerting. It's that simple. All right, let's go on to another problem in the next video.